Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp, and I am here live to take your U.S. Immigration questions here on a Friday before the holidays. If you would like to go ahead and put your questions in the comments, you can go ahead and do that by putting your questions in the comments. So I am here, I come on here every day, usually at the end of the day, and I'll probably be back uh, tonight to answer your questions. But I thought I would hop on to answer your US immigration related questions today. I'm also going to talk about a particular topic, um, a US immigration topic that I think you need to hear about. But feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the comments as soon as you have a question. Doesn't matter if I'm talking, you can go ahead and interrupt and I will just go ahead and answer your questions as they come in. So I would like to talk about how to apply for the green card if you're here without status um, and you have you qualify for the green card through a relative but you are out of status and now the next step you're trying to figure out is how to go about doing it if you're out of status in the United States and unable to leave the United States. Um, but keep in mind, as I'm talking about this topic, you can feel free to put your questions in the comments. Now, before I start, I just want to let you know more about me. I'm US immigration attorney, Sharif Atharp, and I help clients to get their status in the United States, get their green card and status in the United States. Um, and so you can learn more about me by going to the link in my bio. The link in my bio will lead to the website where you will gain access to the phone number. So you can call at any time. The phone lines are open 24 seven, but there are scheduling coordinators who are available to take your call between 9.30 a.m. and 11 p.m. at night, Monday to Friday. And there will be someone who will be available uh, from 12 noon on Saturday to 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday to schedule your appointments. So go ahead, learn to learn about the law firm, to um, get in touch, to schedule a consultation. Go ahead and call or um, go on the website, fill out a contact form. Now, if you're out of status in the United States, how can you fix your status to get the green card? So many people are in the situation where they come to the United States and they decide to stay. They either decide to stay because it's, it's better to stay. Hi there, beauty by Lati, it's nice to see you. It's either um, better to stay in at, and great, a JMW, I cannot wait to hear from you. So they either feel like staying here in the United States is better than going back home um, or there is a relative um, here that can sponsor them. And some people find out later that they're unable to, um, they're unable to apply for the green card and stay in the United States and get stuck here. So let's talk about that situation. So if you are here and you're the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, so when I say immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, I mean you're the spouse of a U.S. citizen, you're the parent of a U.S. citizen who's 21 and up, or you're the son or daughter under 21 and unmarried of a U.S. citizen, then there are ways to still adjust status while you're in the United States, right? So that is one option. Keep in mind that you are, you are not automatically disqualified from applying for the green card while being in the United States. The only caveat here is that you have to make sure that in order to qualify for adjustment of status, even if you're out of status, if you're the immediate relative of a US citizen, you have to be sure to show that you enter the country with permission, so you were paroled into the United States, or you entered with a visa even if you overstayed. So my girlfriend is here from the Dominican Republic on a visitor's visa. Can I marry her on that visa? So um, Big Dre 06, if you are a US citizen and you guys want to get married, she's here and you just want to get married, um, as long as you are a US citizen and she entered in with her visitor's visa, which it looks like she did, then she could qualify for adjustment of status if everything else um, works out. Now, those are the basic requirements is that entered with uh, permission, so a visa, and the spouse is a US citizen, 
Now, and also make sure and there are no other disqualifying facts in, in, in your girlfriend's background. So for example, um, if she came in with a visitor's visa, it's very unlikely that she'll have anything in her background, but criminal issues or um, any kind of past immigration violations. Hi there, Alan, uh, Angelindra, it's nice to see you. Um, I'm a nursing assistant, want to work in the US. Um, so beauty by Lati, you'll have to qualify in some way. And so that's one of, I'm talking about some of the ways to qualify to apply in the United States. If you want an employment based um, visa or status, you'd have to make sure that you have an employer first. So big trace 06, I, this is what I represent clients on. I help to facilitate the process. So if you're thinking about doing this before you do anything, get legal advice, very important so that you don't make any mistakes along the way. You're free to call. My phone number is plastered all over my videos. And you can also go to the link in my bio to go to the website. So great question. Keep those questions coming because that's why I'm here. I have made a very unusual appearance today and I'll probably be back tonight to answer more questions because I always like to close the night out with you. But I thought I would hop on in the middle of the day, um, right before the holidays, by the way. So um, if you're here in the United States and you're getting ready for 4th of July, uh, Big Dre 06, uh, you're welcome. Um, have a good weekend if I don't get to see you tonight. So uh, Devon, I'll WhatsApp you, have some questions for you. So I don't accept WhatsApp um, for questions and I don't do legal advice through Messenger. You will need to call 561-405-4889. When you schedule a consultation, I will meet with you via video. Um, and so that's going to be through Zoom or go to meetings or um, through phone. So if you want to do a phone consultation, then we do that one as well. Um, and you can also send, if you send a message, you're going to be directed to call. So the best thing to do is go to the link in my bio, go to the website where you'll see all the different ways you can contact us. There's a web form, a contact form on the website. If that's more convenient for you, you can fill out your information and we'll get back to you and schedule that consultation. How long does it take for an I-130 to be approved for an LPR child under 21? So it's taking a little over one year. So the time range, green beet salads, you're welcome. So the time range for the I-130 right now, and for those of you who don't know, the I-130 is that petition that the relative usually files at the beginning of the green card process. And that's taking a little over one year. Um, it can range from nine months to one year. Um, and Devon cash flow, I'm glad you understand, and I, I'm really looking forward to helping you. So I am talking about how to apply for the green card. If you're in the United States, you're out of status, how can you apply for it? Um, you're gonna want to hear this because if you're here and you're stuck, you can't leave. Um, the US, I'm also going to talk about a solution there as well. So I just talked about one of the ways to still apply for the green card, even if you may be out of status. And one of those ways is if you have, if you're the immediate relative of a US citizen, that means you're the spouse of a US citizen, you're the parent of a US citizen, and that US citizen is 21 um, and up or you are the son or daughter of a US citizen who is under 21 and unmarried. Now, what if you don't fall into, and, and another thing is to qualify to apply within the United States as the immediate relative of a US citizen, you must show that you legally enter the United States or that you are in the United States with some sort of permission like parole or a visa. Now, if you are the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen and you enter the country without permission, then you're going to fall, not fall into this category. You're going to fall into another category. And I'll talk more about that. Another way is if you are here and you have relatives that can sponsor you, um, they either are sponsoring you, but they're mistreating you or they're refusing to apply for you and they're mistreating you, there could be a way for you to apply for the permanent residence on your own, apply for your own green card, your own work permit, and go through the process. I'm so sorry 
um Shavian, that you have been waiting since last year COVID has really thrown a wrench into everything um it was backlogged before and now we have um many delays so i'm sorry about that um can make sure um Shavian, that you check on your case make sure that they are not waiting for anything additional from you because sometimes they are waiting for you to submit additional documents before they schedule their appointment sd neil thanks for the follow can i ask is it better to apply for a green card before one year or after two years uh, for marriage so you can apply for the green card at any point um, that you're married if you want status in the united states you want to solidify that apply now don't delay it but what's going to happen is that um, when you go to the interview and if you've been married for less than two years you'll get a two-year green card and then you'll have to renew that two-year green card so you'll have to renew it at the one year nine month mark by either applying jointly with your spouse or showing that you can't apply with your spouse after one year and nine months because of unforeseen circumstances for example like a divorce happened and but yet you st you had a good marriage you had a real marriage but divorce happened anyway or mistreatment or extreme hardship but um you can just renew that two-year green card to a 10-year green card my advice i don't know what your circumstances are sd neil and so uh, the general information based on my experiences don't wait to apply for your status so much can happen within that time to complicate your case um, but I don't know what your situation is so call schedule a consultation and I can t I can advise you based on your personal circumstances but generally I would say don't wait um, if you are married to your US citizen spouse um, or a legal permanent resident, it depends on where you are to decide which uh, process to take. But if you're married and you qualify for the green card, do it now. Um, but to be able to decide strategically what to do, it's best to get legal advice. Great questions, keep those questions coming. I am also here talking about how to apply for the green card. If you're out of status in the United States, how do you fix your status and go on to get the green card anyway? So SD Neil, I'm sponsoring my husband. We have been married for 1.5 years. So um, in that case, you can apply. There's no time limit on when you can file your papers. You can file for your papers and the green card at any time. If uh, the, now if you've been married for 1.5 years and right now interviews can take anywhere from nine months to over uh, 18 months to get. So for example, if you file your documents now and you attend the interview, you'll be over two years and your spouse would, and all being well, you're approved, your spouse would get a 10 year green card. So at this point, you're married at 1.5 years, apply, because um, no matter what, at the point that the application process is finished, you're likely gonna be married for over two years. So that's that could be good news. Um, if you would like assistance to go ahead and get things going, call schedule a consultation and let's get started on your case i'm narrow i'm narius thanks for the follow good day do you only do marriage uh, related immigration absolutely not so i help in marriage based family based employment based and then there's the e2 visa that i assist clients to get that's an in more of an investment investors based visa Hi, good afternoon. I would like to know if my mom can sponsor my two kids without me. Uh, no. So unfortunately, grandparents can't sponsor their grandchildren. So it would have to be your um, mother would sponsor you and then your kids would go along with you as long as they're under 21 and unmarried. So keep those questions coming. I am talking about how to fix your status in the United States. Now, if you are in the United States, you overstayed and um, you don't qualify to apply for the green card in the United States, you're not married, you don't have, um, and you don't have um, any, any way to qualify while being in the United States, then there is a way that you could fix your status. So for example, if you were, if you're being sponsored by an employer, or you're being sponsored by another family member, such as a parent or a citizen son or daughter, 
um, or um, if you are being sponsored by a, um, a so a parent um, or a citizen's son or daughter, right? And you don't qualify to stay in the United States, then there is a way to fix your status by applying for a waiver. Now that waiver is a type of forgiveness and you still have to meet specific requirements to get that waiver. Now you will have to have certain family ties uh, as a law stands. Now you'd have to have a US citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent who will experience extreme hardships without you. So this is not your typical fill in the blanks type of form. Actually, um, hardly any of the application, immigration applications are your simple fill in the blanks form. Uh, but in this case, it's going to take a lot of strategy, legal know-how um, and coordination to get it right because extreme hardships is not necessarily, well, they're going to really miss me if I don't get the green card and I have to go back home. Usually your US citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent have to be dependent on you in some way. Um, and uh, with your not being able to be here with a green card with them, it can cause devastating effects on them. So uh, let's see, can you get a green card by a next green card holder? Yes, so if that green card hold, if you're the spouse of a green card holder, um, or you're the son or daughter uh, unmarried of a green card holder, they can apply for you. But keep in mind, now the, to be the spouse and the child under 21 and unmarried of a green card holder, you're looking at about a two year process, could be even less because right now the process is going faster than usual. Actually, the process is on the same timeline as if they were a citizen. And that's because right now there's no wait list for what's called the immigrant visa number. That can change at any time. So if you have a green card holder spouse or you have a parent and you're under 21, get on it right now because your application could go faster much quickly. Um, now, if you um, now if you are married um, and you're over 21, you don't qualify. If you're over 21 and you're unmarried, you qualify through a green card holder parent. Um, but keep in mind that that process is about five to six years right now. Uh, I have, I have applied for my husband one year ago. Still, status is showing in progress. How long will it take? So you could be looking at 18 months to 24 months, depending on the process. Can family members reside and work in the country while their filing is in process? It depends. Um, Sudin, it depends. So if you're the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, um, the, and or you have status, so you can uh, maintain your status in the United States while the process is going forward, then yes. Now, if you ha are the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, that means you're the spouse of a U.S. citizen, the parent of a U.S. citizen, or the son or daughter under 21 of a U.S. citizen. Even if you're out of status, but you came into the country with a visa, you could apply for adjustment of status and get a work permit while you're in the United States. If you don't fall within these categories, then it's unlikely you will qualify for adjustment of status. And you, if you are here and you're out of status, you're, you're probably going to have to look at the option of a waiver. I know I'm telling you a lot of information. It's essential information, but I know it can get a little complicated for you to absorb within this time that I'm telling you. Um, and if you are in, in a situation like this, before you do anything, schedule a consultation to make sure you're on the right track and to know how to approach your application. Green beets salads. What can be done if you have a U.S. citizen children, but you are not? Kids are under 21. So unfortunately, um, there is not anything that your children can do for you until they turn 21. And so that is a sticky point in immigration law is that having children alone, it doesn't qualify you. They must be 21 and they must make the move to apply for you. Or if you show that your US citizen son or daughter is 21 and up, they are mistreating you and that's the root cause for why they're not applying for you, then you could apply for your own green card as well. 
keep those questions coming because that's why i'm here so if you're married to a green card holder can you get your green card as well absolutely you could qualify for the green card through a green card holder spouse now the way that you approach the situation garth williams depends on um where you are and what your immigration status is but absolutely uh there is there is the way to apply for the green card with a green card holder spouse so keep those questions coming and now i was talking about another way to apply for the green card while you're in the united states even if you're out of status and um no so garth williams for i noticed you said you're in delaware so i am an immigration attorney i can practice immigration law across state lines and across borders as long as i'm dealing with u.s immigration law and so it doesn't matter where you are i can help you through your immigration process so you can give me a call schedule a consultation and let's um see if you qualify Fat Magul 171 thanks for the follow. So another way you can stay in the United States and apply for your uh, green card is if you are being mistreated. So if you're being mistreated, verbal mistreatment, emotional mistreatment, um, if it's physical, then physical is not absolutely required, but if it's physical, that definitely qualifies, then you can apply for your own green card and work permit. And um, if you're being mistreated by a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident spouse, if you're under 25, then a parent, if you, are, if you have a son or daughter who's 21 and up, uh, then that also qualifies you. And you would be able to apply for your own green card. You wouldn't involve them. And this is just for the purpose of immigration. It's not going to set off an investigation or police coming to pick up your relative or anything of that sort. How long does it take to get an interview date after finishing the other steps? So it could take um, weeks to months. It depends on where you are, what, what is the, uh, how backlogged are the service centers. Um, what you can do, gorgeous uh, G28, is go to USCIS.gov, go to case processing times. And if you're in the US, you can track um, how long it's taking each service center. Um, I want to move to the US with two kids under 21 from Trinidad and Tobago. I need help, please. So tick sauce one, um, it really depends on how you qualify. You need to schedule a consultation. And let's talk about how you qualify for it. If there's a way, you know, we have to evaluate your circumstances to see if there are ways for you to come to the United States because you either have to qualify through an employer, a family member, or um, if there is some humanitarian means, then maybe. But it all depends on your circumstances. Do you help with cases anywhere in the United States? Absolutely. I help with cases anywhere in the United States and the world. So I help clients to come to the U.S. from all over the world, all over the country. And so I can help you with your immigration case. You're welcome, gorgeous G28. So keep those questions coming because that is exactly why I'm here. Um, Deb Debriar Rankin, thanks for um, the sharing the live. I appreciate that. So I am here to answer your immigration questions. So why not take advantage of that right now? Put your questions in the comments while I'm here. I'm talking about ways that you can apply for the green card if you're out of status in the United States. So I've talked about two ways. Um, Tick sauce one, thanks a lot. Would love to connect with you. Great, go to the link in my bio where you will get to the website. You can call the phone number to schedule a consultation. You can fill out a contact form and the scheduling coordinator will get in touch with you to schedule a consultation. So there are multiple ways for you to do this. And there's also the phone number, which is 561-405-4889 to go ahead and schedule your consultation. Now, I have been talking about ways to fix your immigration status, to apply for the green card if you're in the United States without status and stay in the United States to do it, get a work permit. Or if you don't qualify for that, how to fix your status and still go on to get the green card. So I talked about being the immediate relative of a US citizen who came into the country with a visa or permission. I talked about 
um, being mistreated by certain relatives, such as a U.S. citizen or green card holder spouse, if you're under 25, a U.S. citizen or green card holder parent, or a citizen son or daughter 21 and up. There's a way to stay in the United States. You don't have to leave and you can apply for a, a work permit while you wait for the process. I'm going to talk about if you don't fall into any of those categories, though. Uh, we are married, have a house together, Garth Williams. And that's great evidence um, of a bona fide marriage. Um, but Garth Williams, keep in mind that if your spouse is a green card holder and you're here without status, you'll definitely, there's a different process. I'm going to talk about that process here, but you definitely want to be careful and um, consult before you do anything. Does USCIS check how I got green card if I apply for citizenship? Um, after five years of green card. So yeah, um, yes, that could come up. Now it depends on what the circumstances are, but yes, absolutely. They will look back to see how you got it. Sometimes in so certain cases, they will make sure that you didn't get it erroneously or wrongfully or by fraud or misrepresentation. So it's very important that if there is something in your background that you want to check on to make sure it won't affect you, and your citizenship that you get legal advice first before applying because even applying and then something goes wrong it could even affect your permanent residence so you want to make sure to get legal advice if you are uh in if you are a pr in another country and can if you're a permanent resident in another country and can only be out of that country for so long does it hurt your a case to travel back and forth while sponsoring your spouse. So as long as you SD Neil, as long as you're not spending over um, six months at a time, or, and if you go over a year in the country, that can definitely hurt your your permanent residence and cause them to revoke your permanent residence. Also, if you stay out, in, outside of the United States for six months in a year, that can definitely affect your ability to apply for US citizenship, so you want to be careful. But traveling back and forth, um, quick trips to see your spouse should not affect your um, ability to apply for citizenship, but you want to be careful. Um, so get a consultation. Um, she's very good and knows what she's doing. Thank you so much, Debriar. I appreciate that. Um, Debra, Debra, I appreciate that. Um, and that's true. My consultations are very detailed. And so I want when you're leaving to understand what your options are, to understand how you should approach your situation. And I also want to help you um, if there are viable options to pursue. So thanks so much for Debra, uh, Debra for saying that. Um, so, um, Sammy, I want to ask you a personal question. So I don't do personal questions here. I do immigration related questions. I'm a U.S. immigration attorney. And so I just want to focus on those questions that deal with the immigration process. So put your questions in the comments because I am here to answer your immigration questions. So go ahead and put those questions in the comments right now. I have been talking about how to fix your status if you're in the United States and I talked about how to apply for the green card while you're in the United States. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is what if you don't qualify to apply for the green card at all? What can you do to fix your status to still go on and get the green card? And so uh, the next thing is if you're here and you are without status and you don't qualify to do adjustment of status, um, then so Sammy, go ahead. If you have a, a U.S. immigration questions, go ahead. Put the, those questions in now while I'm here. I'm here to take your questions. So feel free. Um, now, if you don't feel comfortable with asking your personal question, the best way to ask your question is in a consultation because none of the information I'm giving here is personal legal advice. It's very general information. And so if you want help with your particular immigration issue, the consultation is the best. So keep those questions coming because I'm here to answer your questions. And so let us get to that one where if you don't qualify to apply for the green card while you're in the United States, what can you do? So to fix your status, 
you will need to leave the United States. But first, you have to make sure you apply for a waiver. Um, and this waiver will allow you to leave the United States. Because remember, if you overstay by over 180 days and you don't have status in the United States for 180 days, then what that means is you, if you leave the country without an approved waiver, you are barred from coming back to the United States for at least three years. So that means no green card, no visa, no coming back, right? For those three years. And keep in mind that it could be longer because once they see the past immigration, the past overstay, it's gonna be very hard for you to come back to the United States. Um, if you overstay over a year, that's a 10 year bar. So if you want to fix your status to complete the green card process at the embassy in your home country, you'll first have to apply for a waiver to fix your status. And what that waiver does is if you have a US citizen or a legal permanent resident, spouse or parent who will experience extreme hardships if you don't get the green card, then this could be the path for you. You could get approved. When you're approved, it will allow you to buy your ticket when the interview comes and to attend the interview. And then within two to three weeks after you get your approval, all being well, you get to come back to the United States. Um, and so that is a way, even if an employer is sponsoring you, you'll still need to show that you have a US citizen or a legal permanent resident spouse or parent who will experience extreme hardships to be able to fix your status and get the green card through an employer or through uh, um, through family. So very important. Now, what are these extreme hardships? What am I talking about? Um, now, extreme hardship is going to be anything that is going to be more than a mere hardship or con inconvenience uh, for. Um, so how can I apply for eight months visa? So it really is up to the officer when you're coming into the country to determine what is the amount of time that you'll get to stay. But if you would like to apply for a visitor's visa, then you have to show strong ties to your home country. And that means that you can show that you have such strong commitments to your country that you will return um, after a temporary visit to the United States. Because the main thing the officer is looking for when they're interviewing you for a visitor's visa is that you're not at risk for getting the visa, coming to the United States and just staying in the United States. So good examples of strong ties to your home country would be things like a business, um, strong family ties, property, a mortgage, debts, um, things of a long-standing employment. So having a co-parenting custody agreement while being filed for, um, I need to sign off from other parent. Um, so um refrain refink um so you have a co-parenting custody agreement while being filed for i need a uh, sign off from the other parent so i'm not sure if this is an immigration related question or it's a family law can you rephrase that question while i'm here just to uh so i answer it correctly if you're deal if you're asking a question specifically related to your family law issue then that is going to be family law. I do immigration law, but clarify so I can answer your question. So with this waiver, right, it's um, the extreme hardship that you have to show that your green card holder or citizen parent or spouse will experience. It's not going to be um, your typical, um, your typical, uh, you know, inconveniences. Extreme hardship is going to be they're so dependent on you that it's going to cause a devastating set of effects if you don't get the re green card. So uh, Rifa Inc. Um, I am okay. So Rifa Inc. It's um, thanks for that correction. I'm being filed for the fact that there's a co-parenting agreement um, in my home country. Would uh, being the first parent. Um, so. Uh, refining it sounds like there's a complex issue going on here schedule a consultation and let's talk more about it because um, would I need the other parent um, so this is a more complex process because it sounds like 
Uh, so now if you do have a co-parenting agreement in another country, um, then definitely because the, the court, chances are, if it's the same as here, that means that there is an agreement that's approved by the court. And so you want to make sure that the other parent is consenting to your kids maybe moving to the United States um, with you. So definitely um, some form of consent may be needed, especially if taking the kids is going to be in violation of that parenting agreement. Good afternoon, where's your office located and how much is a consultation fee? So the consultation fee is $150 for up to an hour. And I provide, I, um, in Boc I am in Boca Raton, Florida, but I do video and phone consultation for those who are not close by. Does uh, US give visa to a pregnant woman for a period of one year or eight months? No, so I know when it comes on to uh, being pregnant, that could be a factor in the officer deciding to give the uh, visa. Um, so it all depends. Um, maybe a woman may get it even if she's pregnant and she may not. Um, but uh, usually when visas are, are given, it's usually given for five years or 10 years. And no, it doesn't mean you get to stay in the United States for five years or 10 years, but it means that you don't have to renew the visa for the next five years or 10 years. My big friend, oh, oh it's nice to see you. And, um, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm glad it's Friday and it's a holiday weekend. So that's an extra and thanks for asking. So I'm finishing up my topic here. I think I answered everybody's question, um, but please go ahead and keep putting your questions in. My sister is asking, how can she apply for a work visa? It depends on how you qualify. So now if we're talking about a work visa, you're likely going to have to qualify through an employer. So the, the first thing you have to do is find an employer who's willing to sponsor you. I don't do uh, placements or uh, employment placements or anything like that. I usually come into the picture after you have agreed that the employer has agreed to sponsor you. And it's usually in most situations, it's usually the employer who's going to hire me. But it depends on what type of visa you're applying for. So if you're in the United States without status and you want to fix your status, you don't qualify to apply for the green card while being in the United States, I've been talking to you about applying for a waiver, forgiveness to be able to leave the country. So I, I was talking about what you need to apply for this waiver. And to apply for this waiver, you're going to need to have a US citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent who will experience extreme hardships if you don't get the green card. Extreme hardships could be related to health, finances, employment opportunities. If your spouse or even your parent, they have to relocate with you back to your home country, it could be cultural barriers, language barriers, crime, um, lack of healthcare uh, resources in the country that you have to move back to prove extreme hardship. And it could cover other issues. It just depends. It's a case by case basis. So it depends on what your particular situation is. Would it take long to get my residency if I have DACA and marry a natural citizen and also veteran? So in, in now, if, if he is a veteran, if your spouse is a veteran, there is the ability to get what's called a parole in place. Um, and that is you can get a work permit before you even file the papers. Now, um, it doesn't having DACA doesn't make it faster, but it's it, the process is the shortest right now, and it's going to be a process that can range from anywhere from ten months to um, to twenty four months. The average time is eighteen months. Are you uh, willing to sponsor me? I'm from, um, so I don't do sponsorship, and so you'll have to find an employer or a family member who can do that. I help. Uh, with the application process, but I don't sponsor anyone. So I am pretty much finished with the topic that I was talking about today. I gave you a lot of valuable information and it's how to fix your status if you're in the United States, how to fix it to stay in the United States and apply for the green card and how to fix it if you can't stay in the United States, but you have to go back to your country to finish the process. I will try to get back tonight 
to um, do another live because I always like to end the day with you. I hope this was useful. Now, if you would like personal legal advice, call 561-405-4889 or go to the link in my bio and it will take you to the website where you can complete a contact form. You, that means you submit your name, your information, and the scheduling coordinator who will be ready and waiting to schedule our consultation is waiting up until 11 p.m. tonight. Um, you can call the number directly um, and you can also send an offline message right now through the chat. So there are different ways, different options to get in touch with the firm. Follow me if you're not already following me so that you can continue to get valuable information and join me on the lives because this is where I really answer your quest, your general questions and touch base with you all. Thanks so much for joining in and asking your awesome questions and hopefully I'll be back tonight. But if not, you'll see me tomorrow as usual to keep answering your questions. Have a good night, have a good day everyone. I'll see you soon.